السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فلولا نفر من كل فرقة طائفة ليتفقه في الدين ولينذروا قومهم إذا رجعوا إلى آخر الآية <تصفيق> Dear audience, we constantly receive one um, question regarding how to deal with my relatives who are not Islamically educated and uh, only those good people who are really worrying about their relatives they ask that question they say we alhamdulillah we understand deen we are trying to understand it but those people who didn't understand it who didn't study the deen they never come to us and they never ask any question to us so that has become an issue for everyone. Being jahil, and when we say jahil, it's not actually an offensive word because in Arabic, whoever doesn't know deen is called jahil. So sometimes even a, a proper alim calls an improper alim as jahil as well. So when he says jahil, that means this person is jahil in certain things he still needs to learn the deen properly so obviously I'm coming back to the top, uh, point those who are learned learned person I mean learned person in deen obviously the aqarib of that person was supposed to ask him the questions but usually they will go to someone else or they will just, um, you know, do not value you. And that actually makes you feel a little bit of um, sad because you feel like, what's the point of learning my deen? Because I can't even control my, new, my, my own aqarib, my own family members. So for, the, for, these, for, for those who feel sad, I will just tell you something. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him Nabi and Rasul, all the Quraysh, the people of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, didn't accept him as a messenger. Before he became a messenger, everybody used to know him as a good person. But as soon as he came out to the Maidan or the field of Nabuwa and he started proclaiming his prophecy his Risala people started turning their faces away from him and the first you know Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after receiving the Nabuwa the first and foremost duty was to give the message of Nabuwa to his own people and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Oh Allah, O oh, oh Rasul, give in inzar, meaning, give the message of Allah. It gives another meaning like you scare them of Allah's punishment, but in general it will just give the meaning of, give the message of Allah to your عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ To those who are your relatives, who are very next to you. So obviously a person, if he has got his wife, he will give message to his wife first. So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi did that first. He gave the Nabuwa's Risala's message to his wife Khadijah Al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. And she accepted that message. And then Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to his nearest Aqarib. Majority of them rejected. Only from different, different Shu'ab, different branches of Quraysh, from different branches of Quraysh, such as Abu, Abu Bakr, Uthman, and uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, 
they believed in him but his own people didn't later on his own uncles like such as Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala an Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala an they became Muslim but majority of his own people didn't take him easily so they turned their face they used to feel sad whenever they used to see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam around them so being a da'i being a knowledgeable person in deen we shouldn't feel that kind of sadness because that happened to our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faced this problem himself so we shouldn't feel any um, bad feeling about those stuff we should just let it go inshallah Allah will make it easy and we should make dua for them non-stop because obviously if they were like us they would understand everything I hope that will inshallah help and uh, as I read the ayah at the beginning where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah tawbah the meaning of the ayah will be as فَلَوْلَا نَثَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ طَائِفَةٌ فَلَوْلَا نَثَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ طَائِفَةٌ لِيَتَفَقَّهُ Why not a group of people from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying why not a small group of people from every tribe or every nation go out to learn the deen and then come to their own people and give them the message of what they have learned so this was the purpose of our life that is why you know majority muhaddithin rahimahumullah said if there are 10 people together in a family one must learn deen properly and he should take responsibility of his own people and if it is not possible then at least two three relatives should make one person alim amongst them and that person will be doing the da'wah that is compulsory our people do not even understand that if somebody is alim they do not even value the alim they think oh okay he's just our people the way the Meccan kuffars they used to make fun and uh, I mean they used to mock Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam such as in Surah Al-Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he used to go to his shopping they used to say وَقَالُوا مَا لِهَذَا الرَّسُولِ يَأْكُلُ الطَّعَامِ وَيَمْشِي فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ Allahu Akbar Such, such powerful, uh, you know, statement or you can say words from these people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala copied in Qur'an Allah said, وَقَالُوا and they say the fool people they say مَا لِهَذَا الرَّسُولِ what kind of Rasul or what is what happened to this Rasul this messenger يَأْكُلُ الطَّعَامِ he eats food like us وَيَمْشِي فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ and goes to the shops so they thought Rasul should be somebody who is like not from human he has to be out of sins basically they meant he has to be out of everything, out of all contacts of human life, human lives. Obviously, Rasuls are Rasul, isn't it? They are ma'asum. They can't commit any sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made their hearts so pure. But being a normal person, we do commit sin. So if somebody says, oh no, this person is like that. I know this, you know, why don't people listen to our anything? It's because they think, oh, you're just our family member. You're just like, you know. Uh, Tipu, Shopu, Mapu, yeah, whatever the name is. They think, oh, you, you, you are with us. Why would you give us such message, yeah? I'm not going to listen from you. Yeah, this is why, you know, it's shaitan who, who wants you think like, who wants people think, think like that. The way shaitan made the Makkan Kafir think about Rasul in such extent that they would even talk about his daily lives. Astaghfirullah. So I would just advise all these people who are actually struggling, just do sabr. I know some of you are saying like, obviously this kind of things make you feel like no point of studying deen then. 
because people can learn themselves wherever they find some message of Islam they will just learn it yeah but obviously you make dua for them because they are not even understanding that deen is not such easy thing that you just get a um, you know like you know uh, painkiller from uh, you know you can get it over the counter and eat it for your pain reliefs it's not like that deen is important you need to understand from a mustanad person and when somebody studies in a in a madrasa proper madrasa he receives a sanad obviously if somebody was just a you know bench taker meaning like he used to just go to the madrasa and just used to sit in his seat and not used to pay attention these kind of ulamas are i mean molubis are available in our uh, local areas lots of molubis are like that obviously but you need to understand from another mola uh, you know sheikh who would recommend you to listen to the person but if you know certainly your relative has finished his study you must listen from him because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you about that on the day of judgment he will say there was a warna next to you there was a there was an alim next to you why didn't you ask his mashwara before you have done something before you started doing something that is very important and i will just conclude this with one of my you know teachers words one day a person came to him and said huzur what is this masala and he was basically asking him the masala yeah a normal masala but then the huzur you know our, our ustaz goes okay i know you have your cousin brava who is alim why did you leave him and come to me he goes oh he's just zakir i know him uh, Zakirni or yeah in Bengali he said Zakirni it's like he's just not giving him any value so then the Ustaz said look Zakir we actually honored him because he finished his study he's he's mashallah good good alim why didn't you ask him why didn't you ask him first rather than asking me I know you have respect for me but you were supposed to go to him first if he said I can't give answer then you could have come to me so that's a great lesson for us that it is something important that if somebody is next to you like someone knows a little bit just right next to you you ask that person first if he doesn't know go to the next person available person so we have to be very careful for those people who do not understand that fact and those people who are alim i would say be obviously allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even says wataba sabil haqqi wataba sabil sabr so apply this ayah inshallah in your daily life allah will help and nowadays people, I don't know what happened to people, they just take messages of Islam from anywhere, from TikTok. I've got some students, they ask me questions about TikTok, you know, video makers. Uh, they say like somebody said this, somebody said that, somebody said that. And that those things are actually baseless. And they are spreading those through TikToks or YouTube and people are thinking, oh, okay, I got, I grabbed some knowledge. So I'm, I, I'm probably, I'm, you know, people will say, wow, I became, um, you know, uh, forest guard in Bengali we say forest guard or you can say pious person yeah I don't know what kind of mentality they have maybe just probably they are doing it for for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they do not understand that spreading this kind of messages may lead them to Jahannam because if that message is not correct and you are spreading it yeah that will lead you to Jahannam because someone might practice upon that message yeah I mean after after learning from that message and in deen obviously we always tell people we must learn something from mustanad person somebody who has got sanad somebody's sanad reaches rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam only that person has got the authority to speak or to give a, to give you a mas'ala or an answer otherwise random people has got no responsibility no liability to 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 answer your question in deen May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq and understanding to realize this fact insha'Allah.